What? That's ridiculous. I don't think that's true. Oh, hello. Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. You caught me in the middle of uh, reading a little bit of the newspaper. Um, well, today we're talking about active reading. Um, and we've done a couple of these videos about active reading. And today we're going to talk about how to find the author's opinion or to figure out the author's tone. Um, another important part of actively reading and um, something that gets asked about on the test. So um, the real key to understanding an author's opinion and an author's tone, especially on the GMAT, is to pay attention to the word choices that the author makes. So the passages on the GMAT are very nuanced, they're very subtle, it's not going to be, there's not going to be an author out there who's going to say, I am really upset about this thing, or I completely disagree. Um, they're just not going to come out and say it. Um, they're just going to, uh, they want to sound intelligent, and they want to sound like they're thoughtful, and so they won't have extreme um, statements of their opinion or, their, or of their tone, but it still leaks into their writing. And it leaks in through certain words that they decide to use, like certain verbs or adjectives um, that they use throughout their passage that can give you a hint as to how they feel. So think about the word choice when you're reading. Um, and this is kind of hard to do because when you're reading a sentence, you're presented with the words that the author chose. But to be good at this, you have to think about all of the words the author didn't choose. So think about, you know, if you saw a sentence that had the word promising in it, there's so many other words that an author could have used like troubling or even it just stating that something might be this way. Um, and this recruit, you really have to be, a, uh, you have to really think about what other options were available to the author and why did the author end up choosing promising instead of troubling. Or for example, if an author uses states instead of prescribes. One, states is sort of neutral, but just prescribes has some connotations to it. And so that's really what you need to think about is the connotation of the words that the author is choosing while um, you're reading the passages. Okay, so uh, for the practice today, we're in the official guide to the GMAT. Um, it's the green book. It looks like this. Ha! I have it right here. This is the book. It's the 13th edition. Um, and question number, it's the passage that's associated with numbers 120 through 127. I recommend stopping the video right here. Go actively read that passage and then come back. So hit pause, go read the passage, and come back. I'll just wait. Okay, you're back. That's excellent. Um, so first, I outlined very roughly what this passage is about. There's four paragraphs, so that's why there's one, two, three, four. Um, this guy, John Clark, who we'll refer to as JC, we learned that he studied something related to telephones or the telephone industry and how it changed, and that brought up a conversation of uh, technological determinism and social constructivism, which I'm using TD and SC to write because I don't want to write those long words. Um, in the second paragraph, they, JC talks about how technology leads to changes in an organization and the skills, and this is where we learn what TD is. I didn't know what it was until I got there. Uh, this other guy, B, I don't even remember his name, he uh, thinks that managers actually control technology and make those decisions, and so that's what SC is. That's what, how we learn about SC. Third paragraph, we learn that the SC people misrepresent the TD people, and then in the fourth paragraph, JC refutes it. So there's, there's a basic outline of what's happening. Um, but what's really interesting are the subtle uses of words in the passage. And I'd ask you, um, do you think the author agrees with JC or agrees with this other guy, B? And there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a specific sentence where you're like, oh, obviously he's like, I believe with JC. But you can see in his word choice 
where he does actually agree with JC in this idea of technological determinism. So in the first paragraph, we see this uh, phrase, solid contribution. This is a ringing recommendation, solid um, contribution, meaning it's a very positive uh, contribution to the area of study. So that is something that I read that and was like, oh my gosh, he is in love with JC and JC's study. Um, lively issues. Also, this is a very active uh, adverb. It tells me that this is something that's exciting and I feel I have positive associations with it. And the author did too when they chose this word, lively issues. Um, they could have just said issues. They didn't have to say lively. Um, so that tells me too that, you know, the author does care about uh, this topic and has a very positive feeling about JC. What's interesting is in two, we learn first now there's sort of this contradiction or this, um, not conflict, but tension between TD and SC. And in this sentence, we get very sort of tense words. We have subordinate, rest, and then finally construed, which is definitely a, a strong hint. But even these words, subordinate and rest, they're used to talk about um, this part of uh, the topic, of the social, constru uh, social constructivists. And you know the words used to describe a thing or to talk about a thing carry meaning and carry a connotation. And so rest and subordinate, these are kind of, uh, they're a little aggressive, they're, uh, they make me feel um, that it's not a very exciting thing to talk about. Um, and then finally, when we get to construed, uh, this is definitely a very charged word, that someone is taking something and changing it to interpret it in a specific way. Um, and that shows me the author's tone and sort of feeling about social constructivist SCs is not super positive. Uh, Going forward, we saw gain acceptance by misrepresenting. This is a hugely strong word um, that is telling me about how the author feels. And then finally, at the very end, the author says, JC helps answer the question. Help, helps answer the question. This is a great signal that the author has a very positive feeling and association with uh, JC and his studies. So pay attention to the words. There's going to be big patches in these uh, passages where there aren't going to be a lot of uh, words that signal the tone and the opinion of the author. You know, there's going to be parts that are very descriptive, but every once in a while these words will pop out. And so if you practice looking for them um, and start to see the subtlety in the way that the authors are writing, you'll notice like solid contribution and think, oh my gosh, this is the biggest recommendation I've ever seen in a GMAT passage so far. Um, so remember, think about your word choice, think about the word choice that the author is making. This is hard to do because you have to think about all the other options that the author had, not the one that's right in front of you. Think about what you see in front of you and then think about all those other possibilities and that'll help you to get a sense of the author's tone and opinion. All right, that's it for uh, active reading. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, um, over in the corner over there, we have a link to subscribe to the channel. Um, if you like these videos, click subscribe so that you can be notified when more get uploaded next Tuesday. All right, be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you soon.